Hi, I'm Emily Mason and I'm a third year PhD student at Emmanuel College. I'm a member of the Department for Earth Sciences and my PhD um, involves studying volcanoes. The most amazing thing that I was able to do as part of my PhD so far is to go to Hawaii. In 2018, Hawaii had a really big sort of, I guess, paradigm shifting eruption and it was the largest eruption of its kind in Hawaii for 180 years. So we had the, you know, once in a couple of generation opportunity to go and study the eruption. This eruption in Hawaii, uh, it started in early May 2018. And over the course of May, a series of 24 fissures opened up with lava spewing out. And by the time we got to Hawaii, which was towards the end of July 2018, uh, the lava was coming out of just one very large vent, which was called Fissure 8. And one of the really tragic things about this eruption was that um, it started in a housing estate. Lava started sort of slowly coming out of the ground and people had to be evacuated. And by the end of the eruption, over 700 homes had been destroyed and um, thousands of people had been displaced from their homes. It really was a very dramatic event um, in Hawaii and it was declared a state emergency. My research team, which is made up of people from uh, the University of Cambridge and the University of Leeds and some people from the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, um, we went out to Hawaii to study the, the gases and the particulate matter that are emitted from volcanoes when they erupt. We were in Hawaii for three weeks doing field work. Um, we were an all-female team, so five women, three PhD students and, and two early career researchers all working together on what was really very complex field work, as well as sampling the volcano as close as we could, um, both on the ground in quite a hazardous environment um, and also using, using drones. We also set up a network of stations around the whole island of Hawaii, which we had to visit every two days. Before this field work, I had never seen molten red hot lava before. And the first time I saw it in Hawaii, it was moving in this incredible lava flow, which was traveling at 30 meters a second. The channels may be at most 10 meters wide, and it's moving like, like a rapid, like water rapids. Um, but as the channel widens out further away from the source, the channels may be 100 to 200 metres wide and suddenly the lava flow looks like this flowing river of rock moving slowly so you can see it, but it looks like solid rock and just here and there you can see little bits of lava sort of peeking through. I think one of the potentially most interesting implications of our research is that we might be able to uh, better assess different types of hazards from volcanic eruptions, specifically related to the gases and the particles they release. So on a, in a typical eruption, or before an eruption, volcano observatories and scientists that work on volcanoes will try to construct hazard maps so they'll show particular areas around the volcano that might be more at risk from things like lava flows and you might also be able to create hazard maps for people's exposure to different elements and particles in the air that they might breathe in during a volcanic eruption and so we think that using our research because we might be able to better understand how different elements and particles are transported we think that we might be able to build up a better idea of, of how these hazards might affect people living around volcanoes, not just in Hawaii, but all over the world.